So, we're going to be reading out of the second letter to Timothy, first chapter, verses 1 through 7 today. With it being mom, Mom's Day, the, the intent of Mother's Day is one that should be expressed every day to all of those women who are moms by giving birth. All those women who became moms by adoption or in, in the making of a blended family. All those women who are grandmothers, all those moms that are mother figures to the children that come into their lives. Which means that almost all women fill a mother's space in someone's heart or life. So we do honor mothers, but we honor all of you ladies because because you do take a place in somebody's heart um, and, and become that figure that, that so many people today in today's society are missing that, that maternal um, feeling. It was a woman named Anna M. Jarvis who first suggested a national observance of an annual day that honored um, all mothers because she had loved her own mother so very dearly. At a memorial service for her mother on May 10th, 1908, Miss Jarvis gave a carnation, which was her mother's favorite flower, to each person who had attended the service. Now, within the next few years, the idea uh, of a, a day to honor mothers gained popularity, and Mother's Day was observed in, in a number of large cities in the United States. On May, 19, May 9th, 1914, as an act of Congress, President Woodrow Wilson pronounced the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day, thus making it a holiday, a special day, a day for a public expression of our love and our reverence for the mothers of this country. And so Mother's Day was born. Yay! <laughs> you know, there's... Some, that, that Mother's Day, and I think I've said this here before, but you know, Mother's Day is the day that the most phone calls that are made in the in the in our country. More more phone calls are made. The, the telephone companies are overrun by by phone calls um, to Mom's Day. On the other hand, the most collect phone calls are made on Father's Day. It's a day to reflect today, our mother. If your mom, if your mom is still alive, it's a day to give her a small gift and to say thank you. If your mother is no longer here, but with the Lord, then it's a day to praise God for the gift that he gave us in the form of our mothers. And I understand, I truly do, that, that Mother's Day is a difficult time for some of you. Maybe you want to be a mother, but you can't for some reason. Perhaps some of you haven't had the best mother in the world. Some of you have had a mother who's passed on. Some of, you, some of your mothers uh, have, have a child that's passed away. Some of you mothers feel the pain of a wayward child this morning. Some of you are flying solo as you worked hard to nurture your child's faith. I pray that God will give all of you comfort and peace this morning in his grace. And yet I would honor in the, of this day. I'd like to speak about motherhood and its reference to a mom's influence in our lives. I don't think that we can really understand the influence of mothers unless we concentrate on what that is. And Scripture gives us an idea in our focal passage of Scripture in 2 Timothy, verses 1 through 7. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Where God's Word says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace 
from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in, in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I might may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of, of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. The books of First and Second Timothy uh, are some of the most special books in the New Testament. And I say that because we're given a chance to peek into this special relationship that, that God had formed uh, not only between Timothy and his mother and his grandmother, but also the Apostle Paul and Timothy, the, those extraordinary evangelists that, and, you know, with them the church had spread by leaps and bounds because, because of their efforts in the Lord. And we read time and time again how Paul and Timothy converted people to Christ, and then later Timothy strikes out on his own to reach people at their time and place of need. Paul was the older man. He was the, the, the man of experience, the, the man that was called by Christ himself. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. You know who the Gentiles were, right? Those are everybody that wasn't Jewish. Just, just a little bit of a lesson, just in case. Timothy, Timothy was the, this young man. He was the, the beginning in, in the ministry, and Paul took him under his wings. He saw something special in Timothy as he was doing his first missionary uh, trip. There was some father and son feelings there as well, as we, we read in, in where he called him, where is it? Yeah, my son, my, my dearly beloved son in verse 2. They were companions on the missionary field. They were friends. They were, they, were, they were definitely a relationship that's worth mentioning and, and uh, examining between the two. And it was special, it was important. It was important to, to Jesus and the church. It was, it's important to us today. And so in these two letters, we see this father-son exchange about uh, of Timothy uh, uh, from Paul giving him advice. Paul wants to encourage his young friend in, in the ministry, and, and he first you know, gives him a, a, a trip down memory lane really quickly. He tells him what, what his roots are. Paul wants Timothy to rem remember who it was that influenced him, how he got his start. Now, if we notice in, in the scripture of today that Paul doesn't say anywhere that he had influenced Timothy. He doesn't say that he had influenced him in any way. He never claims to have taught Timothy anything. He places that influence on somebody else, somebody more special, somebody that God had put into his life from the very beginning. Paul never claimed that he led Timothy to faith, but rather the influence came from his mother and from his grandmother. He specifically points out the genuine faith that is in you, that was already there before he met Timothy. And he recalls that this faith was transmitted to him by his mother and his grandmother. How many of you here have been led to the Lord that, that, that grew up with a mother or, or grandmother that, that shared the Lord with you? Raise your hand. Isn't that a wonderful thing? How many of you listen to them? <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Eventually, right? <laughs> Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know what that means, right? Remember those times when, when mom was beating you in the head with your Bible, you know, and she was you know, telling you, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. 
And you were going, when you're a teenager and then you're young, 20-something, you're going, Tch, right? I was a 40-something. I was still going, Pff. and then God reminded me of all of that stuff, all of the stuff that God wanted me to do, how he needed me to act, the person that he wanted me to be. I'm sure there are many of you here today that have gone through the same thing. We've come back to the Lord. Mothers, it is never too early to start instilling God's word into the hearts of your children. Never. God wants us to use you. He wants to use you to teach your children respect for God's word. To teach them respect for the kingdom. And if you yourself do not respect those things, then you cannot expect your children to, to respect the same things. Timothy's mother and grandmother, they did what God wished. They brought him up. They taught him the Bible. They taught him about the Almighty God. They influenced him, raising him in the faith. His father was a Gentile who obviously had no spiritual influence on his young life. The only mention of Timothy's father is in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 1 and 3. It's the only place that you hear about him. Now, we don't know if, you know, if he was killed, if he, if he just wasn't that, you know, if he's one of those uh, dads that are there but not there, you know, you know, some of those guys are. Timothy was a tireless worker for the Lord. And, and he changed a lot of lives. I mean, he, he was sold out for Christ. He ministered to a lot of people because of the faith that he learned from his mother and his grandmother when he was young. I find that amazing. Don't you wish more people would do that today? That, that, that your kids would grow up and they would stay in the faith? I know we all wish that because we know what the world is like because we've been through it, right? We've lived in that, that muck and mire. We don't want our kids to go through that stuff. But most of us have to go through it to come to this point in our lives. Amen? The influence of a mom is huge in a person's life. Many scholars have come to the conclusion that you can't really understand a person unless you know where they came from, how they were brought up. Anybody know who John Wesley was? John Wesley was the, the founder, if you would, of the Methodist Church. And it's said that you could not understand John Wesley unless you understood his mother, Suzanne Wesley. And she was so instrumental in his faith and, and, and keeping him on track in his life that, that she in, inevitably affected the movement of the, the Methodist Church. So without her and her drive and her faith in him and in the Lord, you might not have a Methodist Church. Anybody here heard about Abraham Lincoln? Just Just checking. Abraham Lincoln led our nation through probably the, the greatest time of crisis right here in this country. Well, maybe except for now. But who was it that made Abraham Lincoln the man that he was? He said that it was his mother. I would submit to you this morning that there isn't a single person here that hasn't been influenced by his mother, their mother, in one, five, ten, ten thousand different ways, right? Haven't we all been influenced by our mother? Now, some of that's not good, right? But most of it is. We're all influenced some way. I truly believe that it's hard to understand another person's past without understanding their mother. Can we ever really understand the influence a mother has on their children, the depth of, of what it is? 
And see, I don't think so because we can't divide our life that much because they are so ingrained in our life, right? Our mothers are so much a part of who we are when we grow up and they invest so much of their love and their life into us that we don't realize down to the minute fiber of our being how much they affect us and influence us. The Apostle Paul realized that his fellow worker, Timothy, had begun his journey of faith at home with his mother and his grandmother. He knew that. And just as a side note, grandmothers, you are so important. Just because you've had your kids and you've raised your kids, that does not mean that you will not be that wonderful motherly influence on your grandchildren. You need to be there. You need to be a part of that. I know that, that our ladies here are definitely in each other's lives, and I'm thankful for that. Paul notes that Timothy's strong faith came from his grandmother and his mother both. She was an important part of his spiritual development. So we need to also remember that our grandmothers are a special influence in our lives too. Now, I didn't write this following, and I don't know whoever did, but I think they nailed it. It's called, If a Child Lives. If a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, he learns to be shy. If a child lives with shame, he learns to be guilty. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns to be patient. If a child lives with encouragement, he learns confidence. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. If a child lives with fairness, he learns about justice. If a child lives with security, he learns to have faith. If a child lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If a child lives with acceptance and friendship, he learns to find love in the world. How moms influence a child, how dads influence a child is so important. And is, is, is that little tiny things that we don't think about how we act and what we do that they pick up on. And some of the stuff, you know, I, I look at my kids and I'm going, man, they act just like me. You know, there was a time I'd be going, yes. Now there's a time I'm going, no, don't do that. <clears throat> there's so much how you ladies influence our children. So this is what I'm trying to tell you, my beloved brothers and sisters. First is be thankful for your mom. Be thankful for your mother. I don't care how she is. I don't care if she was a mean, ornery old what you call, right? See, because they taught you something. If she's the best mom in the world, awesome. But you couldn't have that because I had the best mom in the world. Be thankful. If she's living, make sure that you make an effort no matter what, no matter what, to thank her for the influence on your life. For her making you who you are. If she passed, make sure that you praise God for the blessing that your mother was and still is to you in your life. We can show our thankfulness by honoring our moms every day, right? Exodus 20, verse 12. Do you, you know where part of the Bible this is from? Is it the Ten Commandments? Do you remember that? Anybody remember, everybody remember what that is? Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother. Honor your mother, father and your mother. There isn't anything in there that's qualifying. It doesn't say to honor your mother if she's just the sweetest thing. It doesn't say honor your mother 
if she gives you everything you want, it doesn't say honor your mom because she's the most beautiful woman on earth. It says honor your mother even if she's mean and nasty and cranky all the time. Honor your mother. Gentlemen, do not be looking at your wives at this time. Honor your mother. There is no qualification because we learn something from them, good and bad. And, and this is the only of the Ten Commandments that has a promise with it, by the way. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So kids, honor your parents. Honor your mom. And if you do, guess what? You get to live a little bit longer. That's a bonus, right? Second, be mindful of your own influence. I can't express this enough. We are so haphazard in this culture to just say whatever is on our mind, to, to, to blow up at whatever is in our heart, wrong or right. And we realize it's just like that throwing that stone into the middle of a lake that you can never retrieve whatever comes out of our mouth or the actions that, that, that we've given. Think about how fortunate Timothy was for having a mother and a grandmother who were, the mo were more interested in, in him knowing the Bible than becoming a great state, state, statesman of his day. They were more interested in him knowing God than anything else. How wonderful is a mother today who's more concerned about her children's souls than about their future careers. How wonderful is a mother today who is more concerned about her children's eternal life than their success in life. A mother who is more concerned about their relationship with Jesus than their popularity with the world. A mother who's more concerned about their spirituality than their intellectual, their musical, or their athletic accomplishments. A mother who's more concerned about their standing before God than their standing on social media. A mother is a hard job. It is a hard job. We couldn't do it. That's why God made you guys, right? <laughs> we couldn't be mothers. I know because... As I reflected during this message, I thought about my mother. And I re reflected about what me and my five siblings put my mother through. My, da my dad was a seagoing Marine, and so he was gone a lot. He did four tours in Vietnam, he volunteered for. That tells you how good we were. And one tour in Thailand as they were pulling out. It's amazing. It's only by the grace of God that none of my, me, that my, myself or, or neither of my five siblings were buried as children when my dad was in a way. My mom had a sixth grade uh, education. She had to quit work. We had to quit school so that, so that she could help make money for her family. My grandfather was a coal miner in Pennsylvania. He had been in three serious uh, cave-ins. So when she was in sixth grade, it was the second cave-in that he had been in. And he couldn't work. My grandmother had three kids. So she quit school to work in a seamstress. I mean, quit school in sixth grade to become a seamstress in Pennsylvania. She learned so much from my grandmother. But my grandmother was a, was a, a both my grandparents on her side, my mom's side were Ukrainian. They were from the old country. And they were hard. You know, that's how they grew up. But my mom was this huge personality huge personality and she could cook up a storm
And she had this huge laugh. This zest for life that her mom and dad never had. And she shared all of that with us, along with her passion for cooking, along with so much wisdom that came from a woman that today would be called inferior because she didn't make it past sixth grade. My mom. And you all have similar stories. Your mom is important. Being a mom's a hard job. I don't want it, don't want ever want it. Besides that, I don't look good in a skirt. <laughs> I want to personally thank all of you ladies out there that are moms or soon to be moms or mother figures in people's lives. You do an amazing and wonderful job. A tough job, a necessary job. And I thank God for all of you. And I'm thankful, God, to God for my mom, Rose, who I honor today. And continue to honor. I have a little video. So this is the reason why we do this. You know, there are a lot of churches that don't do this anymore. They don't have an altar call, which is, let's just say it's stupid. Okay, we're just going to call it. We can do this 365 days and not have anybody, but one day somebody takes that invitation. Today it was our brother Woody. Yeah. He professed his need for Jesus Christ. We prayed about it. That was our job to disciple him. Now we have to have a Duncan day, right? So we're going to do two on the same day. <laughs> we're blessed. I want you, I'm going to ask Woody to come to the back with me, and you guys um, will greet him into the family if you would. Praise God. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day, okay? Gentlemen, take care of your ladies. Don't have Mother's Day and have mom cooking. <laughs> That's just wrong. That's just wrong. Even if you don't cook, invite yourself to somebody's house that is cooking. <laughs> Look, for real, honor these ladies. They're so important. They mean so much to us. They teach us and have influenced our lives. Your challenge this week is to remember that. Remember what mom did. Yes, uh, some of it's not good, but not all of it's bad. That's right. right? Can you do that? I know that you can. God bless you. I love you. Call me if you need me, okay? <laughs>